What's going on, guys? It is me, Tyson the Trainer, back with another episode for you of Sports Talk. No, it's not. It's not Sports Talk. It's a normal podcast. My bad. Uh, look, I wanted. I actually didn't know what I was going to talk about today, but I did think about a good topic that I want to cover. And, uh, well, firstly, it is another episode, and I appreciate you guys as always. I just want to always just share my appreciation with you for actually just listening. You know, because I'm always like, it's quite bizarre that um people listen to what i have to say and that you guys you know take on the advice that i do give out because at the end of the day all i want to do is help people you know however i can help people um get results makes me feel good because it's obviously like a selfish thing too like if i get people results that just goes to show that people think i'm a good coach because i get results and if people think i'm a good coach i get more clients and people talk about me and i get uh, cloud for that and so like you know it's it works both ways like I get to help people and in return I get um, I'm looked up to in the industry I guess so again I just really appreciate you guys putting in the work and listening to what I have to say and thinking about you know what I say and just listening because I never I literally never thought I'd be in this position where I am somewhat of somewhat of an authority um, to a degree you know in here just giving advice and people take it verbatim so with that being said Today's podcast, I actually want to talk to you about myself. It's all about me. No, and just to, you know, just to kind of give you guys an idea, like, uh, like hmm, that you don't have to be like the fit fluencers or like myself, you know, and just kind of understanding what realistic is. So I think you know this podcast is going to be more about realism and understanding, you know, what you can be. You know, for you and who you are and what you want to get out of this versus what everyone else is doing. So, yeah, literally made that up on the spot because I was like, I'm just going to jump on here and start fucking rambling and see if anything good comes out of it. So, you know, if it's a good one, cool. If it's shit, my bad. I don't really like to plan podcasts. Like sometimes I'll have an idea topic, sometimes I won't. And I think when I free flow, some good ideas come out. Sometimes I'm obviously trying to find my words, but yeah, we'll see how we go. So, for those of you who listen... A majority of you, not all of you, you are just a normal person. You might have kids, you might be single, you might be young, you might be in your 40s. You know, you have a job that's that's not most likely not in the health and fitness space. Okay? Your priorities, your first priorities are not healthy and fit for the most part. You have other things, you have life stresses. You know, some of you are going through really tough times. Some of you are going through new life transitions. Everyone's on a different journey, okay? So when people of the fitness industry talk about certain things and do certain things, you always have to take this with a grain of salt because you are not these people. You are not me either, you know? And that's why things I cover, like things I talk about, things I do, I pardon me, never expect my clients to do exactly what I do. And I never expect any of my followers or you guys listeners to do what I do because like this is my job. Like this is my full-time job is training, nutrition, coaching people. I have the time to get the gym in. I make it a part of my life, you know? I set my own hours because I work for myself. I have a home desk treadmill that I walk on every day to get my steps up. I'm always researching health and fitness. Like it's something that is a part of my life and it's my identity, okay? And just like these other fitfluencers out there, it's what they do on a daily basis. And so when we do certain things, like some of them, unfortunately, don't understand the, the disassociation between a normal person and themselves. And that's why I also think a lot of, again, call me judgmental. I mean, call me biased or whatever, but it's like a lot of... Um, competitors, coaches type of thing, expect normal people to do what they do. Wake up in the morning, go and do your fucking step master. What's it called? Stair master. Go and do your stair master for like 45, 50 minutes or whatever. Then go and make sure you go home and get your protein 30 minutes after your workout. Then go to the gym a second time a day. You know, then making sure this, then making sure that, then making sure you weigh out every food to the gram, then making sure you're meal prepping every meal for the week, right? All these things, and it's just like, it's so unrealistic for normal people, okay? And they don't understand that. And that's why, like, you know, toot my own horn, I get a lot of people who have come from other coaches 
and who are like, I just, they just didn't see eye to eye. You know, they're like, oh, you know, my coach just, they expect me to do this and this and this. And it's like, the coaches are just making people do what they do. Okay. Cause like, oh, it works for me. Might as well work for them. But it doesn't, it doesn't work like that because again, you're not, your, your, your job, your life is not revolving around health and fitness. And I always say health and fitness should add to your life and be a part of your life, but it should not consume your life. Because if it's consuming your life, you're doing too much. Unless you wanted to make this your career, unless you're wanting to be a professional in some type of fitness bit of the industry, then yeah, okay, it's going to consume your life. But if it's not, do not let that fall into the consumption mindset. This is why I don't get my clients to track every single fucking thing down to the gram because they don't need to. This is why I tell my clients, yeah, do meal prep, but you do not have to meal prep every single meal for every single day in one day and then freeze it all for the week and eat the same shit, all right? And it's like, you have got to, you have got to accept that wherever you're at in life and whatever your circumstances is, we have to base it off that, okay? So when you guys look at me on Instagram and I'm smashing out 22 to 25,000 steps a day, if you can't do that, I never tell anyone, go and get above 20,000 steps a day. I literally meet people where they're at and be like, all right, what can you do realistically? And this is the same question you have to ask yourself. How much time can you actually focus to get your activity in every day for your steps? First question to ask yourself. Realistically, okay? Because just as a rule of thumb, every 10 minutes of walking is a thousand steps, okay? Now, some people, I think everyone, literally everyone should be able to dedicate 75 minutes a day to getting 7,500 steps in. And you're like, oh, 75 minutes, it's not in one big chunk, you know? You can literally break that up into seven 10 minute blocks a day, which is fucking nothing at the end of the day, but all of you can get 7,500 steps in, despite what your job is, okay? It doesn't matter. You can get 7,500 steps in. I'm not telling you guys, again, there are, there are coaches out there who do what I do, do 20,000 steps plus a day. I'm not telling you to go and do that. I'm just telling you to do something, which is 7,500 steps. If you can get more, get more. The more steps you can do, the better it's going to be for your health, hands down, okay? But again, do not make this your, consume your life. If you wake up and you go for a 35-minute walk or a 30-minute walk, that's 3,000 steps right there. A 30-minute walk in the morning and a 30-minute walk in the afternoon and then just accidental steps from jobs and, from your job and stuff like that, you should have 7,500 steps. No worries at all, okay? But again, think about where you're at and what you can do. Do not try and aim for 20, 25,000 steps or whatever it's gonna be. It's whatever you can realistically do with your steps, all right? So meet yourself with where you're at. Because what I always say, like if I'm all the way doing all this stuff that I show, you know, I train seven days a week, I get these high steps in, I eat these calories, I stick to all this. I am someone who's quite driven with what I want to do with my health and fitness and my goals. Doesn't mean you have to be up here. If you do like less than half of what I do, you're going to see your results. Okay. So first thing, steps. How active can you be during the day? Second thing, nutrition-wise, all right? I have the benefit that I work from home, that I can set up my food, that I don't have to meal prep, okay? But I still order meals because I want something easy to be able to get, okay? I like I want something easy that like I have to think about cooking because I'm working and I want to work and I hate to stop to, to create food. So I make my things as easy as possible. Now, if you are someone who's working and you don't have the freedom to, create, to be able to create food each meal, then you're gonna to have to meal prep a little bit. Or you're gonna to have to find different solutions. Now that's not to say you have to cut everything, okay? You don't have to you don't have to make meal prep for every single meal. You don't have to cut out all like everything, no fun foods or any of that stuff. It's like, you know, what can you do that's gonna make your diet work around you? Okay? I never expect anyone to track to the green. I never expect anyone to eat within five grams of their macros that coaches are trying. And again, these things don't fucking matter. Eating within five grams of your macros won't do anything different. Even though coaches are obsessed about it because they're obsessive. You don't have to be. And I used to make the argument, oh yeah, if you're in comp prep, you can do that. I don't even think in comp prep you need to do that unless you're getting very close to the end, like six weeks out, okay? Now, I don't know if you guys have seen how lean I am at the moment. I'm actually gonna do a body fat scan next week. I'm pretty fucking lean compared to most people. And I don't track within five grams of my macros at all, ever have, ever will. 
because I want to show you guys that even someone like me who takes it very seriously and wants to get results and wants to look good doesn't go to that extreme. With my dieting, I didn't weigh everything to the specific gram, okay? Like your fruits, your veggies and stuff like that, guesstimating those things are absolutely fine. Having 62 grams of rice instead of, uh, rice instead of 60 grams is fine. Because what we're trying to do here is like, my goal as a coach for you, like even if you're not my client, just listening, like my goal as a coach and to help people is to make it as easy as possible, okay? And if you think eating within five grams is gonna have any different to your body composition, you're wrong. And that's just, that's just coming from misinformation from coaches. Like I will straight away, like I'm, I have no issue debating anyone about this topic anytime about eating within five grams of macros. You know why? Because the research doesn't fucking show any of that. Anything regarding that, right? So don't make that consume your life. Be okay with eating the calories you need and the protein you need. So W body weight and protein, the calories you need based off my calorie calculator or anything else you do. Follow those things. That's what's gonna set you up for success, okay? So doing that, making sure you're taking time for meal prep and realistically thinking how much, you know, what do I have to meal prep for the week? How long is this gonna take me, okay? Very simple with that nutrition side of things. Now, what I would also wanna recommend with nutrition, do not worry about pre-workout or post-workout timing. Do not worry about carb cycling. Do not worry about high days and low days. Eat the same shit every day based on calories. You know why? Because it's gonna make life way easier for you if you do that. And because again, I'm just telling you guys, I want this to be able to be a part of your life, not consume it. And it's much easier to make it a part of your life when you're less neurotic about things that don't make a difference in your life. Okay, like I'm only gonna tell you guys things that you need to do to get the results that you're after. Like if you're a male and you're gonna get to like 9% body fat, if you're a female and you're gonna get to like, maybe like 18, 19% body fat, which is the equivalent of 9% body fat for a male, do what I do. That's exactly what I'm saying. Like do, to get to that, you do not need all this obsessiveness, okay? Do not need a carb cycle. Do not need to do any of that stuff. Because when we think about we know what the principles are of weight loss. It's, it's calorie deficit. We know what the principles are for muscle gain. It's calorie surplus and protein and training, you know? And so when we know those fundamental things, we focus on those fundamental principles, the overarching principles, that's what's gonna drive our results. That's what's gonna get you 90% of the way, 95% of the way, you know? Like I don't need to get any lower than 9% body fat. Otherwise, I do have to start trying to optimize things more. But you don't have to for where you're at at the moment. Because a lot of you listening aren't 9% or 19% body fat. So why are you confusing yourself with all this bullshit that coaches are sharing online and trying to make things harder than it is? Make things as easy as possible. Because the easier you make it, the more successful you are. Like, I don't understand. Like, people, it's like people try to make it harder for themselves. Like, when they're dieting, oh, do I need to change calories? Well, like, when clients ask me, oh, should we change calories now? I'm like, why the fuck would you want to change calories? We saw a drop this week. Why would I want to change calories for you? And they're like, oh, yeah, fair enough. Like, yeah, fair enough, man. Like what? All right, we're going to make the diet harder. You're going to eat less and maybe you won't be as adherent. Like, why would I want to do that to my clients? No, we're winning. Let's just keep moving in the right direction. Same thing as me. If I'm seeing weight loss, on my, when I was seeing weight loss for myself, I'm not changing anything. I'm like, sweet. Measurements are down. Weight's down. Do the same thing next week. And I think it's because people get scared. But we have to get used to being able to do the least amount of possible to get the most amount of results. All right? So with your nutrition, like I said, protein, calories, they're going to be your two focuses with that side of things. Now with training. Train as much as you realistically can in a week with weights between three to five days a week. If you can't do three, do two. Can't do two, do one. I don't care. Do not say, oh, well, I can't do three. I might as well do none. That's a bullshit excuse. Do whatever you can do. Whether that be, okay, one to five days of weight training. Do you have to train twice a day? Absolutely fucking not. Do I recommend people train twice a day? Absolutely fucking not. Do you have to train seven days a week? No, man. Like people are like, oh, you know, I do six days a week program. I'm like, why are you training with weights six days a week when you're a normal person? Like, oh, but I love weight training. Okay. What about taking care of your cardiovascular health? What about uh, maybe reducing some stress overall in the body by doing so much weight training because you are a single mother with two kids and you're trying to run yourself on the ground six days a week? Like stress is stress at the end of the day, you know? And so realistically, I would never make anyone train twice a day like I do. I would never make anyone do something every single day, whether it be cardio or weights. 
It's whatever you can realistically do. But if you can do seven days of exercise, then do seven days of exercise, but make it like a maximum of five days of weight training and two days of cardio, okay? Like whatever you're happy with, like let me just tell you guys, you can make gains on three days a week or five days a week. It doesn't matter. And a lot of you stress out or ask questions. Oh, should I be doing five days a week or should I add another day of weight training in? And it's like, like how much extra like progress do you think you're going to make? Like three days to five days a week, you're going to make a good amount of progress extra, okay? But that's not to say, oh, if you're training three days a week, you might as well not even bother because five days is optimal. It's not that. But then when you go from like five days a week, like six days is not that much, like hardly anything. And seven days a week, you're barely scraping the fucking barrel of differences, you know? And again, people are falling into the optimal range and it's like, you can't even consistently rock up to the gym three times a week, or you can't even consistently eat five fucking servings of, veg- servings, servings of vegetables a day, but you're trying to chase the optimal, the protein timing, the fucking meal timing, the pre and post carbohydrate, uh, you know, uh, I was gonna say pre and post carbohydrate workouts, the pre and post carb, uh, pre and post workout nutrition. Everyone's trying to focus on all these things, and it's like, okay or supplements, or all this shit, and it's like, if you're not eating five grand, oh, five grand, five servings of veggies a day, and you can't train consistently for three days a week, do not even bother trying to think about optimal, because you're not optimal. You're not gonna hit optimal. I don't do optimal, okay? I try and eat four meals a day because of my protein, that's it. I'm not having casein at night, so I have slow digesting protein. I'm not waking up to have another meal because I wanna be more anabolic. I'm not making sure that I'm exactly eating within an hour of training. I'm not doing that shit, and you guys don't need to, all right? And I'm literally explaining exactly what I do, just like taking back a little bit. You know, like again, step count, I have an exceedingly high step count compared to most people. Never expect people to do that. I train seven days a week, never expect people to do that. Do what you can realistically do for yourself, okay? So one to five days away training a week, any other extra time you have, do cardio. Is cardio gonna ruin your gains? No, okay? Don't stress about cardio ruining your gains. What's the best type of cardio? Whatever the fuck you wanna do. Do you wanna do cycling? Do you wanna do running? Do you wanna do swimming? Do you wanna do cross trainer? Do you wanna do a salt bike? Do you wanna do row up? Whatever you wanna do, do it. Whatever you're gonna stick to, do it, okay? How long should you do it for? 30 to 45 minutes. Do you need to worry about calories burned in the gym ever? No. No. Do not ever worry about calories burned in the gym because you'll never get accurate on it. All right? Do you need to worry about... What else do you think you guys need to worry about that you don't need to worry about? What else do fucking people talk about? I'm trying to think like, you know, coaches are always going on about. Um, What else do you guys think about that I'm trying to just like, all right, we need to really cut this off. I guess reverse dieting. You know, there's still a lot of comp prep coaches who talk about reverse dieting. You guys have seen how I talk about it. You guys have literally, I've shown you going straight to maintenance calories and why that doesn't affect you. Oh, yeah, I guess so. So, like, basically, well, let's just talk about the whole reverse dieting side of things again and I guess going to calories. Like, you guys, I don't know if you guys understand that, like, when we can look at things objectively or when we can look at things through the eyes of maths, or science, and we have the facts. Like, facts are facts, right? Opinions, uh, facts don't care about your opinions. Like, dickheads who say the earth is flat. Like, oh, bro, you know, the earth is flat. Like, why are you even having an argument with a flat earther? You're like, you're fucking, bro, like, what do you mean the earth is flat? Or like, imagine someone being like, I don't believe in gravity. I don't know if this is real. All right, sweet, go and jump off the building, you fucking idiot. No one, (laughs) like, I, I'm not even going to bother this energy or this conversation on you because we literally know the facts. Like, gravity is gravity. You're not going to jump off a building and float. We know that. So, like, you know, why don't you go and do it then? Oh, weird. You're not going to do it. It's just because you don't cognitively understand science and math and just facts in general, okay? And the same thing goes for reverse dieting. Like, people who talk about reverse dieting literally do not understand like the the facts of of just how the body works, okay? So like, if you're eating 100 calories less a day, oh, sorry, 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 let me just try and rephrase this. If your goal is to lose half a kilo a week, 450 grams to 500 grams, we know that you have to be in a 500 calorie deficit a day because we know that a one pound, which is 450 grams of fat, contains 3,500 calories, 
So when you eat 500 calories less a day, every day during the week, that equals 3,500 calories of a deficit. And if you see the scale reflect that, you're in a 3,500 calorie deficit and you lose about 450 grams, okay? So when you're losing weight consistently, let's say for five weeks, you've been losing 500 grams every single week. We roughly know you're in a five to 600 calorie deficit. Like there's no question as to whether you're in a deficit or not. Like we know you're in a deficit because the scale weight is reflecting each week that you are becoming a lighter individual, you know? Your mass is going down, okay? So then when we look at reverse dieting, if you're losing half a kilo a week on 500 calories less a day, and if at the end of that week you still lost 500 grams and now it's time to finish your diet, why are we playing any guessing game as to why we need to go back to what our maintenance calories are? Because you know that you're eating 500 calories less and losing half a kilo a week. So all you need to do is eat 500 calories more and you stop losing weight. Like that's the most basic math equation ever. If Johnny is losing 500 grams a week and his calorie deficit is 3,500 calories a week, what does that mean? It means that Johnny is in a 500 calorie deficit. If Johnny wants to stop losing weight, what does he need to do? Johnny's metabolism has adapted even though he's losing 500 grams a week. So what we actually have to do is slowly increase his calories so Johnny doesn't gain fat. Eh, wrong. Johnny's eating 500 calories less a week. In order for Johnny to stop losing any more body fat, Johnny has to eat 500 calories more to stop losing weight. Ding, ding, ding. Correct fucking answer. Like, you do not need to be a wizard to figure that out. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? And like, I'm not saying that you guys like need to know this shit. I'm talking about other coaches there that are like, you know, promoting reverse dieting and stuff like that. It's like, fuck bro. Like just, let's just think about, let's just use logic for a second real quick. Let's just like literally use logic because your opinions don't fucking matter whether you think you need to do something or not. Facts are facts, man. Again, oh, I think I need to go and jump off this building because I don't believe in gravity. All right, sweet. Okay, that person just, they jumped off the building and unfortunately they died because they thought their opinion was that gravity isn't real, but the fact is gravity is real. Okay? So it's like your opinion may be that you think you need to reverse diet, but the facts show that you do not, in fact, need to reverse diet and that literally it is is basically a math equation. All right, so when next time you hear a coach ramping on about it or talking about it, it's just like, mate, like, it's right there. Here's your fucking evidence to show you that that's incorrect. And so a lot of you, you know, I wanted to show you that you can go straight back to maintenance calories because that takes away the scarcity. So another thing I guess you could say is like, you know, don't focus on that extra 100 to 50 calories a week trying to reverse back because that's time consuming. That's consuming your life again. Go straight back to maintenance calories. Straight back to maintenance calories, Okay. Do not, I'm trying to think what else, what else could be like things that you guys maybe overthink too much. Uh, eating at night time, all right? Cutting carbohydrates out at night time. This is basically just going to be a myth thing, I guess. Eating carbohydrates at night time. Don't need to worry about that at all. And again, I'm just going to lay this out for you guys real simply. So people think if you eat carbohydrates at night, that you're going to gain body fat. Or if you eat, yeah, usually carbs at night, you're going to gain body fat, okay? If you are, Let's just talk about this whole 500 calorie deficit again. If you're losing weight on 500 calories less, so let's say you burn 2,500, you're eating 2,000 calories. If you get to the end of the day and you haven't eaten any food and then you eat 2,000 calories or you've eaten 2,000 calories during the day and you've done the exact same amount of activity, so you've burned 2,500 calories during the day regardless and now you're eating 2,000 calories, whether it all be in one meal, wouldn't recommend it by the way, whether you're eating it all in one meal at night time, whether you're eating it over four meals during the day. And it's all after 6 p.m. when you eat it at night. Do you think you'll gain body fat despite burning 2,500 calories? No, you're not because you're still in a calorie deficit, all right? Carbs can actually help with sleep, by the way. They can help with serotonin and reducing stress. So carbs at night is absolutely fine, okay? And again, we come back to this principle. Calories always matter. Okay, like we can do this kind of reductionist thing, okay? So when people, when, when you hear something that you don't know if it's true or not, go back to like, what's the first principle when it comes to losing body fat or gaining body fat? 
it's a calorie deficit or it's a calorie surplus. So when someone says something to you and you're like, I don't know, is that right? Literally step back and be like, all right, what's the principle about calories? Because it always comes back, like it literally comes back to calories. Okay? Like even a seven away from protein, it's calories first. Okay? So if you hear intermittent fasting, oh bro, intermittent fasting, fucking best thing around, increases your metabolism, makes you, or, you know, you have autophagy, all this cool shit that you might hear. You just go back to the first question. All right, so they're saying intermittent fasting, I skip my meals for 14 hours, and then they say I eat in an eight, in a eight hour period, sorry, 10 hour period, if it's 14 hours, I eat in a 10 hour period, and if I do that, I'm gonna lose body fat. Hmm. So if that's, if I'm eating 10, 2,000 calories within 10 hours, or I'm eating 2,000 calories within 16 hours, and I'm still burning the same amount of calories, does that mean it's gonna be any different? No. Boom, there's your answer, right? So when people try and pull the fucking wool over your eyes, Oh, carb cycling. Yeah, have less carbs on your non-training days and more carbs in your training days. Okay, so if we look at total weekly calories consumed overall, it's still gonna result in the same answer, correct? Correct. Cool. So now you guys could kind of think a little bit critically and think all this bullshit that people are peddling and you just need to have that like little bit of logic, you know, thinking about literally first principles. Um, and this like, you know, it kind of helps you guys understand that a lot of what happens in the fitness industry and what's talked about in the fitness industry just doesn't really fucking matter at all. You know, coaches get so caught up in the nitty gritty because it's hard just to sell the basic shit, you know? But it's funny because they think it's hard to sell the basic shit, yet 85% or 87% of Australians don't even get enough veggies in. So I focus literally with my clients. Where's your fruit? Where's your veggies? Where's your protein? Where's your protein? Like it's real, real basic stuff. And you're like, oh, that's nothing game changing. Well, guess what? It actually is game changing because people can't even eat their fucking veggies. Why am I telling someone about carb cycling when they can't even hit their veggies? Why am I telling someone about pre and post workout when they can't even hit their veggies? You know? And all these things that we talk about, uh, you know, like carb cycling, fucking intermittent fasting, pre and post workout meals and carbohydrates, uh, you know, all these type of things. Let's just like, again, let's just take a step back for a second, arguing about all this shit, trying to focus on all this stuff, yet we're not even focusing on the basics. And people are trying to run before they jump. You know, people are trying to get ahead of themselves when they don't even know what they're going on about. Okay? And unfortunately, in the industry of coaching, is that Coaches just listen to what other coaches say and do not actually put in the work for their education or do not put in the work to critically think or do not put in the work to read journals or do not put in the work to see where they're, like, where they're at, uh, sorry, with what the latest research says. Because like, you know, for me, it's just funny when someone says something, I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, we might disagree. I'm like, no, when, in, when I'm disagreeing, you're wrong. Like, here's the information to show you're wrong. We're not disagreeing at all. You're wrong. You know, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If I'm proven wrong, if someone goes, hey, mate, you're saying this, here's a research to say you're wrong, I'm like, oh, shit, I better change that. Because I know I'm just jumping from topic to topic, so this is going to be called ramblings from a coach, right? So when it comes back to this, like, you know, people saying you're wrong, or people saying we disagree, and I'm like, no, you're wrong. If someone tells me I am wrong, it is my duty as a coach to change my opinion based on the facts, okay? And to change my methodology based on the current research. Because guess what? I'm a coach. And it doesn't matter if my ego's fucking bruised because I'm wrong. My clients come first. Their results come first. So if someone came out and said, hey, bro, you're telling people that uh, you know calorie deficit matters most, guess what? It's actually hormones. Here's 12 different studies showing you that hormones are actually the key player. Guess what I'm going to change my stance to? Holy shit, hormones are actually the answer. Because now my clients are going to get results. Why, like, who am I just to save face and be like, nah, I disagree with that. Okay, I'm not a researcher. I'm not a scientist. I'm not as educated as them. I haven't done the things they've done. You know, my fucking opinion means sweet fuck all to anyone. Because it's just an opinion. But if it's a fact, I'm agreeing with the fact. And then I have, like, this is why science is cool. Because science shows us things. We have hypotheses. Is that it? Hypothesi? Hypotheses. We have hypotheses and we're proven wrong or right. If something is proven 
to confirm a hypothesis, it is then replicated and repeated. If it's repeated enough times and it's showing the same result quite consistently, we know what the answer is. And that is what science does. And then we change our, um, what's the word I'm trying to think of? We change our stance, we change our recommendations based on the science. If all of a sudden it started saying Coke Zero causes cancer, it does not say that. If it changed and there was all these studies coming out saying, hey, Coke Zero causes cancer, guess what I'm going to stop doing and telling all my clients to stop doing? Drinking Coke Zero. Okay? Pepsi Max is better, by the way. But, like, I don't understand. Like, what is it to me to fucking save my ego when I'm supposed to be helping my clients? And, like, man, I am, and you guys obviously would know, I like to be right. And I've got an ego, you know? But it's no, like, as much as I hate to be wrong, I admit I'm wrong. Because if I'm wrong, I'm like, who am I to save face? Oh, man, you know what I hate? I hate when I argue with my partner and then she's wrong. Uh, sorry, and then I'm wrong and I have to apologize. Like, I'm gritting my teeth. I'm like, all right, babe, you're right. I'm sorry, I apologize. And I'm like, I fucking hate it. And she's like, you don't apologize. She's like, you know, she's like, at least you apologize when you're wrong. And I'm like, well, what's the point, you know? Being a stubborn cunt and saying, nah, nah, not admitting I'm wrong. And that doesn't help anyone. And it makes me look like an absolute tosser if I'm that, if I've got that big of an ego and that big of a head that I'm like, oh, I think I know, I'm right. Man, who am I? I'm just some guy who knows about nutrition and training who fucking is on Instagram. If, if people more smarter than me say something and I'm wrong, I'm like, all right, well, I better shut the fuck up and listen and agree with these people. Like, I don't understand that at all, you know? I don't understand that at all. So that's my other bit of rambling for you. That why, you know, coaches don't want to change their opinion, don't want to change their stance. And it's also because people have a bit of investment into what they've been saying, you know? People have been saying something for so long that they're like, oh, I can't really go back on it now. And it's like, you've dug yourself a bit of a hole, you know? You guys go back and look what I used to talk about. I used to fucking suck off intermittent fasting all the time. Intermittent fasting is the best thing. It's this and this and this. It wasn't anything special, but I just thought it was great because it fed into my disordered eating and I thought I was cool. Like I thought this was working for me. Little did I know it was just fixed. It was just an issue with my disordered eating, right? But guess what? When I learned the facts and I got called out about it, I changed my stance straight away. You know, because I'm like, this is not helping anyone. So just be aware with what coaches say and be aware of how many coaches just follow each other and listen to what each other says. And they're all like, like the, the funny thing is when it comes to the whole prep side of things, you know, the bodybuilding coaches, the comp prep coaches, all that bullshit. You ever realize they all literally say the same thing? But then you look at the people, I'm not saying academics is everything, but guess what? People who are academically smart are more educated than people who aren't, okay? So these bodybuilders, contest preppers, bullshit things, a lot of them haven't done anything. They may have done one course, if that. They might be a PT. Then you have dietitians. Then you have people who have their masters and their PhD and all these things. None of these people say what the fucking comp preppers and bodybuilders say. No one's saying you need to eat six meals a day. No one's saying you need to reverse diet. No one's saying you need to track your macro to the gram. No one's saying you need to do... Like, they're literally... These people, the people who are fucking doing the research, putting in all the work, they're not saying what comp preppers and bodybuilders are saying, okay? That's because they're all just in a little circle jerk repeating what everyone else says with no information. Oh, old mate who's fucking 102 kilos, trains all these clients. Yeah, he's right. Better listen to him instead of the actual what the research says. Like ask when all this shit comes out about like, you know, with all the things they recommend in bodybuilding and all that type of stuff. It's just like, man, you guys just like repeat what each other says, but none of you actually have any, any idea what you're saying or how things work, or it's just like, whoa. And that's why it's so funny when I argue with them, because I'm like, okay, show me the evidence, and no one ever does. Oh, you're a bully. You're a bully for saying that. Okay, I'm a bully because I'm disagreeing. Sorry, I'm a bully because you're disagreeing with facts. Like, you're incorrect and teaching the wrong things, but I'm a bully. Yeah, okay, that fucking makes sense. Cool. But that's what I'm saying. So you guys, like, again, academics and everything, but people who are, like, I will... Listen to a dietitian, uh, someone with an master, someone with a PhD, someone who is academically smart, I will say them 100% compared to a bodybuilder or a comp prepper or any of that because none of them have even done the fucking research. They always just listen to each other. And that's why we see the same shit repeated over and over again. And it's like, none of that is actually correct at all. 
they're all like copy and paste. They're all doing the same thing, you know? And a lot of them haven't even got any certifications. So that's unfortunate. But again, ramblings of a coach. Now, we're going to go back to what we were saying before. Like, I think a lot of you guys really do think you need to do more than you think. You, uh, sorry, think you need to do more than you actually need to do. If you literally keep it as simple as possible, you focus on how much movement you can do every day realistically based on your goals, okay? You focus on making sure that you're getting your food in that you need to without focusing on splitting the meals up, doing the carb cycling, doing any of that shit. Eat the same shit every day. Make sure you're within your calories that you need to be within, whether it be gaining, maintaining, or bulking. Oh, sorry, gaining, maintaining, or dieting. That's your overarching principles for that. Finally, when it comes to your, what did I say? Um, steps, nutrition, training. When it comes to training, However many days you can do is how many days you can do. Can you do one day? Can you do five days? Okay. I would say have a mix between cardio and weights. Do not think that cardio is going to take away from your gains. It's not. Do not think that you have to train twice a day. You don't. Whatever you can realistically do for yourself is what you need to apply. Okay. And like, honestly, it's so crazy because if I said to you, that's all you need to focus on for the next year, a lot of you are going to be like, yeah, sweet. That's what I'm going to focus on. But then you hear someone say something else. Then you hear someone say this. Then you, And then you start to overthink and overcomplicate and be like, oh, should, should I be doing that? Should I be doing this? No, you shouldn't. Because again, your life is not consumed by health and fitness. Sorry, your job is not health and fitness. You know, these people, their job is health and fitness. It's not even, sorry, it's not health. Their job is not health, right? Most of these people are not fucking healthy. Their job is to be lean and look good for Instagram and to train and diet, basically. That's their goal, you know? And you should also ne- think you're never gonna look like those people, all right? So a lot of you who have the focus of, I wanna be X lean, I wanna be super lean, I wanna be like this, I wanna look like this, do not have that goal because you're not gonna be able to achieve it with the lifestyle you have, all right? These people, like for me, eating 4,400 calories a day, doing 22,000 steps a day, training seven days a week, that's basically like you know my three things. You guys can't do that unless you have a treadmill desk, unless you have time to train every day, and unless you weigh as much as me. So it's like, oh man, Tyson gets to do this, but I can't, but I want to be like that. Well, guess what? Some of you make more money than me, and I'd like to be able to make as much money as you. Some of you have a great loving family. Some of you live really close to your family. My family lives all back in Queensland, up in North Queensland, and I don't get to see them as much as you guys do. Some of you get to fucking go and party with celebrities, you know? I've actually got someone who listens who literally has heaps of celebrity friends. I don't fucking know celebrities, you know? Some of you get to go out every weekend and have fun. I don't do that shit. We all have trade-offs. We all have differences in life, okay? So we can never, and that's why I say comparison's the thief of joy. Don't compare yourself to me or to any other fitfluencer. Look at yourself. Look at your lifestyle and what can you integrate into your lifestyle to be healthier and fitter without it consuming your life, right? Because that's the end of the thing here. Like, that's the end of the thing. That's the, like, that's the end goal. Like, make it a part of your life without consuming your life. And don't get caught up in all the bullshit that's out there. Okay? Whew. Well, that's 37 minutes of me rambling. Um, I don't know if there's actually much value out of this, to be honest. Uh, hopefully, you guys did get something. I was just going, it's a big rant, basically. If you guys enjoyed the rant, uh, you can share it on Instagram at Tyson Trainer with two R's. I will structure my podcast next week, I promise. But I thought I'd just get on here and just speak some shit. So as always, I do really, really do appreciate you guys listening to me. I appreciate the advice. I appreciate when you guys ask questions. I appreciate your support. Like honestly, like I am so grateful that I'm in this position to be able to talk and you guys listen. So hope you guys have a great Monday. I will speak to you next time and stay classy.